My name is uh, Carmen Legg, and uh, I make these uh, six-foot English leather lashes, whip lashes, and I've often been asked how I uh, make them. So uh, today we're just going to show you a few steps uh, of how I uh, make these. Uh, this is a six-strand uh, uh, lash made out of deer hide, ounce and a half to two ounce, no more than two ounce deer hide. Um, goat skin works well as, as uh, deer hide, but as goat skin is harder to find. So we'll show you the steps on how to make this. I start with a, uh, a deer hide, about an ounce and a half to two ounce deer hide, no more than two ounces, deer hide. Uh, the uh, deer hide has to be vegetable tanned, or at least not chrome tanned, you can't use chrome tanned. Uh, the hide is very supple, you can see it's just like a piece of cloth. And uh, the first step is I'm going to show you how to uh, cut out the pattern. This is a uh, pattern for the six foot English lash for a Dutch whip. And you can see they come in different shapes. This is all one continuous pattern, but I cut it up in, uh, in uh, sections, about a foot long. To put these together, you just simply go by numbers. So as you can see, the lash is uh, going to be uh, long and uh, laid out with the pattern. So you just simply take a once you uh, have the pattern draw it out, um, the, if you notice here, the top ends where they fastened onto the whip are smaller and then they come bigger. This is the belly of the lash. As you can see, the bottom one is a thinner lash than the upper one. Again, I use the same pattern for both lashes. I just allowed for one being a little thicker or wider when I cut it out one being a little thinner and actually the you can see that they even grow longer in length. In order to get this narrow neck and then the belly, some people like to have the belly up closer to the top, some have the belly down further. The belly gets the action of the whip to start spinning in the air for a, a, a good crack. The pattern once it's uh, cut out, will be folded here, so that allows for the top of the lash to be folded over. So you look at your your hide. As you can see, it has two bullet holes into it. This is the back of the animal. That tends to be the thickest part of the hide, and then on the bellies, on the sides, it's the thinnest part. So I like to use the thicker part for the top of the lash and the thinner part for the bottom of the lash. Again, as you go around, you're going to try to make that happen. So I usually lay my pattern out around in such a way so that I can have this union in the thick part. Basically, start anywhere. I like to start it's usually at the bottom. So, to make the, um, to uh, mark the pattern out onto your hide, you just simply lay down your pattern. Again, you can develop the pattern any width and length you wish. Again, it's tapered, the strands are tapered. So, lay it on the edge of the hide. Just use an uh, ordinary pen or anything that'll mark the hide, pencil, whatever, and just draw the edge of the hide like that. And just keep going, marking the uh, edge. If you want a longer lash, just keep pulling this back so that the end is a bit longer. 
just draw it out on the edge of your hide like that. Again, I'm going to draw this out a little because I want this last to be longer. When you come to curve, just bend the pattern around. When I come to corners, I tend to just want to kind of go across the corner. And then come in with your next pattern and continue around the corner. Try not to make these bends too sharp because it will put a kink in your lash, in your strands. So just go around like that. Continue up along the sides. And then come in with your next one. And keep going. Around the hide like that. Now once you've got all the pattern pieces drawn out onto the hide, you can simply take a pair of scissors and just cut this out all the way around, or you can use a very sharp knife and a piece of plastic board, and just simply cut the pattern out all the way around. Now that you um, had the uh, the lash cut out. You can see that this will be the top of the lash, and the long strings hanging down here. Uh, this uh, bigger section right here will be rolled up. That'll form the belly of the lash here. So that's curled up and wrapped on the inside with whatever line you're going to use for the uh, in, inside lash. So once you have this cut out, again you can use a sharp knife or a pair of scissors, you're going to cut the strands out after you've marked. This is going to be a six strand lash. If you was using eight you would divide it in two and then in four and then into eight. I'm making a six strand lash so you have to mark where your strands are in thirds on each side. Get yourself a polypropylene board and again you can use scissors but I like to use this very sharp knife. I have a little piece of old scrap leather that I wrap around my finger because it does make your fingers sore after a bit. So position it on the board, start your cut, follow the line, and you can see that the strand is starting to separate. You have to be very careful with this step. Don't go too fast. Just take your time. Make sure that you do this fairly accurately. Again, this is my preferred way of doing it, but you can use scissors or any other method. You can also use a hand-held wooden device with the blade sticking up, and you can kind of hold your letter and pull the blade through. I find that 
when I do that I get a little bit in and out. I like to keep my strands very consistent. Also, I like to separate my strands a little bit as they are cut. And just keep going and going like that. It's very important to keep your knife extremely sharp. When you're cutting around corners, you have to be extra careful and slow. Just take your time. Make sure you follow the mark. Go around the corner. Now when you get right down to the very end, you're not going to have too much tolerance to make any mistakes, so you have to Slow down and be very accurate, take your time and split them strands out so that each one is even. Once you have the uh, strands all cut out, all long like that, you can see I got six strands all laying all over the place here. I have the belly of the lash glued and rolled up with the Last, uh, the uh, inside uh, uh, cord, I'm using a piece of uh, cod line, old-fashioned cod line. You can use nylon line or whatever. It should be fairly stiff and uh, tough. I uh, fasten the end of my lash to a chair or a doorknob or something. Uh, in the middle here, I have a uh, fishing swivel so that the lash will swivel around and around. Fasten it on there, and as you can see, I've started this one. I use a uh, clothespin to uh, hold my work if I ever want to stop uh, braiding. This is fairly simple once you get the hang of it, but it's a little difficult to get caught onto it first. But if you notice, I have three strands coming this way, and I also have three strands going that way. So, again, this is the top. You're going to swing it over so that you can see the bottoms of your lashes, the bottom of the leather. When you start, you're going to have a uh, seam that you see all the way down. Watch that, make sure that seam stays right there in the middle, all the way down. As you do it, you'll know whether you need to go that way a little bit or come over this way a little bit. If you're consistent with your braid, that'll always stay right in the middle. So you can see here that this one is coming down across here. So the next one is going to be the furthest one back. So that'll be this one here. So you cross that one over. Hold it with your thumb while you cross this one over top of that one. Hold it again, hold it with your thumb. Reach down and pick this one up a bit. Come over with the next one. Grab that one and go back over again. Again, hold it with your thumb. Come over with the last. Again, you got three strands coming this way and three going the other way. Now this strand that you brought down all the way, you're gonna take that out and swing it over here out of your way. Hold it with your thumb and finger like that and flip it over again. Now this time you'll see that this strand has come down here so you're going to take that strand and come down over it cross it with this one, cross it with that one go down and get this strand back out cross it with this one bring that one down over it grab this, pull it out, and lay that one across like that. Grab it again, flip it over. If the bottoms of these 
tend to get tangled up. You don't have to worry about this too much. As long as you have the ones over here are not tangled up, you'll be okay. So again, you can see this one here needs to cross over there. Before you do that, I like to tighten this one up a little bit by grabbing this lower strand here and just give it a little tug. Just make sure that it's in there tight and that my finger didn't slip holding it. So I cross that one over again. Bring this one down over. Grab this out of my way so I can bring this one down, that one over, and then finish with that. Now when you get down to the uh, bottom of the lash, your strands are going to be very um, thin and narrow. So what I like to do once I get down a ways towards the bottom is uh, take a safety razor and just scrape some of the inside off so that it makes it lay flatter. There's other ways of doing this. You can put it through a skiver, but I find that the um, strands are so light that they won't uh, hold. They will break. So I just like to scrape some of the fuzz off of the inside of the of the strand so that it a little thinner, makes the end of the lash a little narrower. Now when you get down to the bottom of your uh, end of your lash, you can see that the strands are getting very narrow and thin. Again, you do the same thing. You bring that lash down over. It tends to be very uh, soft and can get twisted very easy, so make sure you maintain the top of the leather upwards. Cross over there, and then cross over there, and there, and you need your tool to grab this strand to get it to come up out of the way. Cross over here, and then finish with that one. Get the strand out. Flip it over. Give it a little tug. Make sure you maintain three on one side and three on the other. And continue on. And make sure that that um, line of rib coming down through here, your seam, is straight all the way down. Any time you wish to stop, just put a clothespin onto it, set it aside, and Come back to it later. In order to make these um, strands uh, consistent thickness all the way, I like to skive my uh, leather. I just use a, an old handheld skiver, and by inserting the leather in there and adjusting the blades, you can draw your leather through. And if there's any spots that have uh, a lot of thickness or fuzz onto it, you can just draw it through very carefully. And if there's any lumps, it'll sky it off and uh, make your strands consistent. Okay, now that you have your uh, lash braided, again, this is a six foot lash. Uh, there's a couple more steps you got to do to finish it, and the next one after this is called rolling. So you lay it out on a nice flat hard surface, have a little piece of wood or something similar, and you just simply, you're going to roll any bumps or imperfections that might be there. I'm going to squeeze it right out. And of course, and as you roll it, you're going to pull a little bit on this end. Now you can see how the lash is becoming flat, smooth, and uniform all the way. And you just continue pulling and rolling. Also, as you do this, 
The end of the braid will increase about another five or six inches down the line. Obviously you do this before you finally tie this off. So I just have this wrapped around and drawn tight for now. I will tie that off later. So then I'll start back up at the top. In. And I'm combing slightly as I go down the table. All right, there's your finished product. You see the lash is nice and smooth. All the way down. Okay, now that the lash has been rolled and it's nice and smooth and uniform, you're going to tie the end off. I like to use a, a bit of uh, nylon string, thin, tough nylon string. I try to uh, blacken it by running it through a little bit of uh, pitch. Then you just stick it in there and draw it through. Now to make the tie, you're just going to simply lay it on the spot that you want to tie it off with a bit of a loop like that. Take the end and as you go around and around, you're going to draw it tight. Keep drawing it tight. Every time you go around, you're going to draw it tight. And wrap six, seven, however many terms you wish. Take the end of the string and put it through the loop and then come back on the other end and draw the end of that loop through and under your wraps that way you don't see the end of your tie off okay now that your lash is done you're going to uh, tie the end off of your uh, nylon line or cod line or whatever it is you wish. Um, you don't simply just tie a knot in the end of your cracker like that because that just will not work and it's not uh, proper. So to uh, knot the end of your lash off you're going to undo the twist a little bit. Oh, about that long like that. Give them all a little tug. Now, when you take this one and you give it a little bit of a curl like that, hold it with your thumb. Take the next one and go around the end of that and hold it. Take the next one and go around the end of that one and slide it through the loop that you made in the beginning. So now you have your three strands sticking out through the loops. You're going to grab all three and you're going to gently pull them in place. Okay, now that you've made your uh, six foot English lash for uh, a Dutch whip or any whip, it can be a buggy whip or uh, bowl whip or whatever, um, you can see that it's um, very nice and smooth and nicely done. This is a little over six feet, but you can make them whatever length you wish. Uh, one final step is uh, after it's been rolled, you have to protect it. So uh, I use uh, neat's foot oil or um, mineral oil mixed with a little uh, shellac and coat that and uh, Throughout his life, that'll last for a long, long, long time. Throughout his life, you should periodically put some more uh, oil onto it to keep it protected from the weather and also to keep it soupable so it doesn't dry up.